Hey folks, Tony here with a really quick video about opportunistic threat. Uh, security practitioners, nothing new in here for you, but if you don't spend your days and nights wrapped up in this stuff, uh, it might be kind of fun. I made this after having a conversation with someone yesterday in which they said, hey, I think security is important, but I also don't think that we have things that attackers would want and find valuable, and so uh, we just don't think we're gonna be the target of an attack. Um, to explain uh, you know, why it's not always uh, you know, what you have, but just the fact that you're there, uh, I ran this little experiment. I, I spun up a Linux server and let it sit in the cloud for 24 hours. Uh, it's just running SSH, and I did that so that I could monitor for unauthorized login attempts. And that's what we're gonna look at here. So off log is the file, uh, that records every time someone tries to log in, and we're gonna look for failed password. Now I spun this box up at 1628, and we can see the first of the hits, upper left-hand corner there, coming in at 1633. Uh, so it took, give or take, about five minutes before people knew this thing was here. Uh, and they came pretty heavy and consistent from that point forward. All in all, uh, at the 24-hour mark, we had 9,948 login attempts. Uh, 4,213 of those were unauthorized attempts to, to get into root. Uh, and the remainder of them were split across a whole lot of other uh, user IDs, about 1,500 of them. Uh, and you can see them here. So anything from people's first names to... Uh, you know, common administrator creds or default credentials for, for different uh, pieces of equipment. Uh, what's happening here is uh, it's called a brute force attack. So basically someone has spun up a bot, it's sitting out there on the internet, it's waiting and watching IP space, and when a new box comes live, uh, it tries to get into it. Uh, because I had SSH available, it started brute forcing, it started trying as many username and password combinations as it possibly could, hoping that I either had a, a weak password or that I was still using the default credentials from a, a manufacturer or something like that. Um, the reason why someone would do this is, is simple. It just builds out their empire of servers, right? Uh, if they're lucky, there's something very valuable on that server itself. But even if they just get access to a box, it's one more box to use and go off and attack more boxes. Uh, in terms of who's doing this and where it's coming from, let's take a look at the source IP addresses. There are about 20 different IPs that I recorded here, the bulk of them coming out of China. Uh, but, you know, I saw some traffic from the U.S., also Russia, Turkey, uh, Brazil, uh, you know, Tanzania, Vietnam, you, you name it. Uh, everybody seemed to have a good showing. Two IPs I didn't include in here uh, came from uh, two different Fortune 500s uh, from their data centers. Uh, so uh, what I'm guessing happened here was that these, uh, these folks had some of their boxes compromised and that now these servers that are sitting in their data centers are being used to go off and try to compromise other boxes. Um, Anyway, I hope this helped to explain uh, a little bit about opportunistic threat and that, again, just an anonymous IP address sitting here on the internet like this uh, gets this sort of a attention pretty darn quickly. Uh, and you could expect to see the same, whether you're spinning it up in a major company's data center or it's just your own home Wi-Fi router. Uh, this sort of stuff is, is sort of omnipresent. Uh, if you have any questions on this uh, or you have ideas for other videos you'd like to see, please let me know. And thanks for watching.